So there's a reason why many of the top fittest athletes in the world do not eat the paleo diet. And it's important that we all understand why. Hey, I'm Nathan Crane. I'm Derek Crane. And we're the co-founders of Crane Factor, where we bring you programs, products, and inspiration on healthy living, fitness training, and creating an amazing life. And I heard somebody who overheard one of the games, CrossFit Games Athlete Dinners, where uh, Dave Castro asked everyone and said, hey, raise your hand if you're on the paleo diet. And the you know fittest people in the world who made it to the CrossFit Games, guess how many of them raised their hand? None. That's right, not a single one of them raised their hand. Now, I wasn't there to confirm this in person, but I heard it from somebody who was. And so, you know, the interesting thing to think about is why is paleo such a big thing right now, especially for CrossFit athletes, and yet the fittest of them all who make it to the games don't even eat the paleo diet? Well, we're going to share with you more of the science and data and research behind that reason because the paleo diet is not good for the human body for a number of reasons especially if you want to perform at your highest level right so true and one of the things that paleo does is it takes away a source of fuel that can sustain you for longer periods of time that source of fuel would be complex carbohydrates right saying like not to take it and yet the body utilizes that as fuel to restore glycogen levels and be able to perform at a high level through intensity. Exactly. So if you don't know, I mean, paleo diet, there's, there's, you know, different critics and people more strict and people less strict, but basically, you know, they recommend roughly 30, 35% of your food through, you know, fruits and vegetables, which I agree with, you know, they say more simplified, you know, just fresh from the earth. Absolutely. I mean, I think that's a wonderful thing to have in your diet. So that's really great. Uh, the other two pieces that, you know, is what's going to limit you as an athlete are the 30 to 35 percent protein, which they're recommending comes from animal protein and, you know, roughly about the same 30 to 35 percent from fats. And a lot of that they're recommending also from either animal fats and or nuts, seeds, avocados, things like that. So where is this diet limiting you from achieving higher levels of, of energy, of burst, you know, that bursting energy, that really high intensity sustained over six minutes, eight minutes, 12 minutes, 20 minutes, over months or years of time. The biggest part is limiting you is on the animal protein and the fats. That's 60 plus percent of your diet they're recommending on animal protein and fats. That's a massive amount of your diet that is not including complex carbohydrates, which is your jet fuel for high sustained energy, right? Yeah, so very true. One thing that I started implementing, I did this even in the last couple of weeks, was I even boosted up my complex carbohydrates. I started meal prepping quinoa and I make a big, 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 big pot of quinoa. I add in broccoli and then I'll even, I'll even bake um, like six sweet potatoes and then, and then I have those meals set aside uh, just each day. And wow, what an improvement, even in my energy alone, but doing CrossFit, I have this one meal that just has a complex carbohydrate load to it that my body just utilizes as fuel through the workout. So even from personal experience, I'm seeing huge results just with implementing that. Right, you know, I did 100% raw vegan diet for a year. Basically, didn't cook anything. It was 100% vegan, 100% raw, right, for an entire year. And so somebody who's on that kind of diet, you know, there are some athletes who are like high fruit, like the 80-20 diet, you know, they're eating a lot of carbohydrates, but simple carbohydrates and mostly fruit, or like a raw vegan diet, where again, you're not really getting a lot of those cooked carbohydrates, you know, we're not getting a lot of the complex carbohydrates, unless you're doing some really creative things, like we were doing with the dehydrator and that kind of stuff. But what happens on that kind of diet, which is actually incredibly healthy for you, um, is that you have to eat these things constantly. Yeah. You got to be eating, you know, fruit all day long, smoothies all day long, you know, a lot of vegetables all day long. Why? Because the simple carbohydrates, the simple sugars break down really quickly and give you, you know, short bursts of fuel quickly. Yeah. For sustained energy over long periods of time, if you're working out, 
two hours a day, three hours a day, four hours a day or more, which is what a lot of athletes are having to do to get to the next level, you know, simple sugars aren't going to get you there. They will help you in the moment and they're important and a big part of our diet, but that sustained energy, that energy that's going to help you sustain long term, the paleo diet is not going to do it for you. It's too much fat, too much animal protein. Those things don't synthesize in the body very well. They don't convert into sustained energy for you. They cause your body to have to utilize massive amounts of energy to process them and break them down. So you're wasting a lot of that energy and then you're not building up your glycogen stores, which is what you need for that intense energy when the workout comes. So you see people get on the paleo diet and they do good for a year, maybe two years, and then they fall off. They fall off from the face of the earth in athletics. And this is the reason why. This is the reason why the top CrossFit athletes don't do the paleo diet. And one kind of final story I'll, I'll share with you. I was watching a video from Katrin David's daughter, the, you know, crown the fittest woman on earth. She was on, she was deathly afraid of carbohydrates. You know, brown rice, beans, quinoa, these kinds of things, right? They, she thought they'd make her fat. She had this conditioning from, you know, wrong information that you shouldn't eat these carbohydrates. Guess what? She wasn't the fittest person on the earth then. She got nutritional counseling. Her coach hooked her up with the right type of information. She changed her diet, started eating a lot more healthy complex carbohydrates. And guess what? The next year, crowned fittest woman on earth. And she attributes a big part of her energy and success and all of that to her changed diet. So again, don't listen to us. Follow what the fittest people on the earth are doing and, and then follow them if they can sustain that, right? Yeah. If they can sustain it long term because the diet plays such an important role in your overall energy and health. It's so important. Oh, it's so true. It is so very important. And if you're feeling like you do need some more protein, just like what you said, the rice and bean combination, you're getting all of your essential and non-essential amino acids right. just within that. You can get a plant-based uh, formula protein powder to be able to take as a recovery shake right after. What I do with my morning smoothies is I add in hemp protein powder. And what this is doing is the plant-based protein is allowing the body to be able to utilize it because it, it sees it as a source of fuel. It right. knows exactly what to do with it. So if you, if you feel like you are someone who's, okay, well then, how do I get enough protein? Because that's such a huge concept today. Then just add in a protein shake, add add in some more broccoli into your diet, add in hemp protein powder. Main main thing is is try to get away from those high fats from animal protein. Try to get away from those from the animal protein in general, start transitioning over to more complex carbohydrates, especially if you're doing intense workouts like CrossFit, and you will see an improvement. You will see your energy levels rise, and that in and of itself is confirmation. You know, just as you said, don't, don't listen to us. Try, try it, experiment with it, and see how your energy levels are. And make sure you are getting that 30 to 40 percent of your diet fresh fruits and vegetables too because yes. that's key that's where you're going to get a lot of your minerals your vitamins your phytonutrients you know that is so important you know don't don't think we're discrediting that at all yeah. um you know really make sure you implement that into your diet but you know i've been on a hundred percent plant-based diet for somewhere around seven years now i haven't had animal protein in my system for like seven years and guess what i have more energy and feel healthier now than i ever have been in my entire life i don't even try i don't even think about protein and without trying to get protein from a plant-based diet i get over 60 to 70 grams of protein a day yeah. most people have protein excess yeah. they you know almost nobody that's ever been tested by a medical doctor if you look at the studies has ever shown up as protein deficiency mm -hmm. so the protein myth we're busting it right here, right now. Yeah. You do research on protein. Nobody has a problem with protein other than most people have protein excess, not deficiency. So that's not an issue here. So again, try it, implement it. Let us know what you think. Feel free to leave your thoughts and comments below. If you got some good information from this, give this video a thumbs up and share it. And if you're not subscribed yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank you. Appreciate you. See you in the next video.